dear friends they are this is from sign consultancy yes so today i am uh, taking this opportunity to discuss on flow additives this is the very important raw material in, uh, for the powder coating manufacturing and uh, before starting i will request you all to subscribe my channel sign consultancy and uh, click on bell icon so that next time whenever i'll put a new video you will get तो so, दोस्तों आज हम पाउडर कोटिंग के जो रॉ मटेरियल है उसके बारे में डिस्कशन करेंगे सारे तो रॉ मटेरियल आज हम नहीं ले पाएंगे बट आज हम लोग फ्लोरेटिव के बारे में डिस्कस करेंगे सो so, दोस्तों दोस्तों अब आई विल स्टार्ट दिस फ्लोरेटिव सो so for today topic is flow additive and for flow additive for the additives are the important ingredient in the formulation of powder coating for the most part additives perform the same function in powder coating as in liquid paint to jo additives hain unke main property powder and liquid mein same rehti hai matlab same raw material to use nahi hota but unka jo function hai like uh, wetting dispersing flow anti cutting texturing powder mein bhi usi tarah ke additive use hote hain and the same additives are used in the uh, liquid paint also so the main characteristic for the additive used for powder coating are see the main characteristics are the additives should be 100% solid preferably a fine powder but sometime a granules can also be used with a crystalline melting point the melting point uh, from 50 is 50 70 up to 100 can be used in liquid uh, in the but the tg should be more than 50 degree centigrade because if tg is low than the 50 degree centigrade the powder may form a lumps as the tg for the resin should be minimum 58 degree centigrade for the additive this should be 50 degree centigrade so it should be 100% active but sometime and uh, the 100% active content is not possible because sometime uh, liquid raw material are also used as uh, uh, master batch maybe in the form of um, resin or in the form of fumed silk this i will discuss later the specific in function the function should be specific for each additive like if it is a flow additive it should be properly for flow then this if it is for the surface then texturing additive for hammer tone and uh, this characteristic should be very functional maybe corrosion resistance anti corrosion antibacterial so chemically non reactive with the 
binder region and con containers yes means during storage of powder coating the raw material should be non reactive with any raw material or the container in which it is packed and depending on the active content the effective dose is also specified but as a being additive it is better to use less dose but it depends on the active content in case where the desired additive is a liquid this was i was discussing it can be in case where desired additive is a liquid it can be incorporated into the formulation as a master batch either absorbed on porous carrier porous carrier may be fumed silica or you can use the filler also for making the master batch but normally when it comes from the manufacturer they use this fumed silica such as silica and this dissolve dispersed in a compatible resin if a powder coating is of epoxy uh, polyester so this additive can be used as a master batch in epoxy resin or in polyester resin and if it is a pure polyester then the resin for the making master batch should be tg uh, this tgic uh, polyester while well, if it is possible to add liquid directly to the powder pre mixer prior to extrusion it is difficult to obtain good distrib distribution mixing of the liquid ingredient and in most cases is better to avoid yeah actually when this uh, liquid additive is mixed um or used in the first stage that is pre mixing stage without master batch then the homogeneous mixing of this additive is not possible in the high speed disperser that is why the absorbed carrier or uh, resin is used to make master batches you see the flow control additives might more accurately be referred as surface tension modifier because <clears throat> when we use the flow additive it reduces the surface tension of the film so to get better flow and to minimize the orange peel because this is their primary function however the term flow control additive is widely used for these material which primarily prevent critters in powder coating if we not use the flow additive in powder coating we will get a full of critters on the surface film so flow additives are used to prevent critters in the powder coating and secondly reduce orange peel for the surface reduce the orange peel sometime this flow control agent in the form of uh, master batch in epoxy resin is also used as a tex texturing agent with uh, specific formulation you have to uh, control the formulation then you can use master batch of epoxy and uh, flow control agent as a texturing agent the flow additive are not used in specific special effect coating such as hematone veins and flow control additive is present in practically every powder formulation means powder coating this flow control agent 
should be used in every formulation but it should not be used in some specific uh, uh, this uh, formulation like hematone and texturing some vein mainly special effect yeah, the flow control agent should be avoided but sometime depending on the formulation it is required in a very traces so it is not a thumb rule ke power, this flow control agent should not be used in a <laughs> in um, any special effect uh, formulation the flow control additives function to reduce the surface tension of the powder particles as they melt flow and coalesce at both the coating substrate and coating surface this air surface and even the powder particles gets melted so due to low surface tension it get adhere with the substrate that is the function these additives functionally be being only partially compatible with the binder part of the molecule is soluble in resin and another portion is insoluble and orients itself as the resin substrate or resin interface this molecule orientation promotes a uniform surface tension across the surface of the molten coating element so jab hamare particles melt hone lagte hain to फ्लो कंट्रोल एजेंट का फंक्शन यही है कि ये पूरे फिल्म पर यूनिफॉर्म सरफेस टेंशन को डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करे सो दैट यूनिफॉर्म फ्लो की वजह से जो सरफेस फिनिश है वो एकदम यूनिफॉर्म आए द मोस्ट वाइडली यूज्ड क्लास ऑफ फ्लो कंट्रोल एजेंट आर पॉली एंड केमिकली you can use the acronal 4f that is a uh, poly uh, polyacrylates or you can use monoacrylates also but both should be absorbed on silica the homopolymer and copolymer are utilized in powder coating all are moderate to high viscosity liquid and most are supplied as a powdered master batch dispersed on silica particles usually in an active level of 65% but there are due to cost parameter the people are using less active content also there are so many material available in market as active content 45% Fifty-five percent, sixty-five percent. So you should consider when active content is more. So the fumed silica, the content of fumed silica will be less. So for better finish, you should use more active content product. But obviously, as active content is more, the cost will be high. so depending on particular system of the resin and curative the use level in the range of 0.5 to 1.5% active material based on binder this flow control agent should be uh, minimum not 0.1 but if, uh, if uh, active content is more than 75 yes the this should be 0.5 to 1.5 but normally if it is 55% active content the uses of flow additive should be 1.2 to 1.5% of the binder if it is a epoxy polyester then epoxy polyester is used as a binder portion and if it is a pp then 
polyester and TGIC both should be considered as a binder. Is the average? Achha. This point uh, eight to one percent should be on the uh, total uh, formulation. Yeah, this is very important. If uh, there is orange peel, you can use the higher level of flow control agent in the formulation, but you should use a balance between the usage level as if the flow control agent is very high, the film become tacky. So in any case, the flow control agent should not be more than 2% of the total formulation. In In addition to the acrylate type, silicones are also used. These are more effective in their ability to reduce the surface tension and lower amount are used than in the case of polyacrylate, typically 0 0.1 to 0.5% based on the binder. Yes, uh, means uh, normally the polyacrylates are used as a flow control agent, but sometimes the silicones are also used to make surface tension low because its uh, properties of polyacrylate with silicon is more effective. The straight poly dimensional siloxanes are also uh, almost never used because they are extremely active and can cause defects such as haze, roughness, pinholes or craters in powder utilization. So this uh, you should avoid and the, basically this, this is for the um, flow control manufacturer because you will get the direct raw material which is used in the powder coating. The phenomena is usually referred to a compatibility and is a result of very low surface tension produced by even a small amount of the dimethyl siloxanes. The polyether and polyester modified polysiloxanes are therefore preferred. They also are used they also used at lower levels then polyacrylates are sometimes preferred in clear coating. However, the polysiloxanes are also liquid and normally supplied as a powdered master batch on silica particles. Where the higher level of clarity in a coating is required, such as in automotive powder coating, the dispersions of active flow control additives on silica are avoided because the silica particles impart a haze to the clear coating in case 100% solid flow control additives are preferred. If you are going to make a powder coating for the automotive, it is better to use liquid flow control agent. Maybe you can make a master batch in a, a calcite or this barite natural barite so that can be used because if you use the uh, base silica silica particles the oil absorption of the silica particles are very high so it may absorb rather it absorbs the most of the resin <laughs> not it may absorb it absorbs the most of the resin so So this flow control agent
the flow control additives based on fluorocarbons are also effective in powder coating at even lower lo doses than silicones but they are not widely used for several reasons the normally contains solvent and are expensive and are not readily available in the form of powder must wedge however they are they have excellent recoatability the reuse of powder coating is better if we use this but due to so, uh, um, presence of traces of solvent they are not widely used and sometimes are only flow control additives that is effective on diff difficult surfaces such as oily or contaminated metal this step um, means the uh, the substrate where more oil is present or maybe some um, you can say this um, casting pieces if we make powder coating with this fluorocarbons they may be good for the performance several high higher molecular weight thermoplastic polymers are also effective in preventing craters in powder coating among these are poly vinyl butyral resin cellulose acetate butyrate and acrylate copolymer these are seldom used except in functional coating because they have reduced melt flow and increase the orange peel of the film so these are so many things we can use but definitely normally we should use we should use the available this powder coating additives so here i will stop this video and in the next video we will take care for the another additive that is benzoin so thank you please place your comment on the video so that i can you i can use that uh, messages or your questions in the next video thank you